Good morning. Welcome to the Catholic Church of St. Mark. May I request everyone, please silence your cell phone. And as you do, let us all rise and join in singing the entrance hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We gather on this fifth Sunday of Lent as we look forward to the new life out of the darkness and the tombs in our world. We call to mind our sins that we may worthily offer these sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you redeem us from all our iniquities. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the resurrection and the life. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. May the mighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Let us pray. Grant, O oh Lord, to those chosen ones that instructed in the holy mysteries, they may receive new life at the font of baptism and be numbered among the members of your church through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. I'd like to invite the children who are here to please come forward. I'd like to have some parents who'd love to help with the children. One or two, please come forward. Good morning, children. Good morning, Father. I don't hear you. Good morning, children. Good morning, How are you today? Today is what do we do on Sunday? What do we do at the church? Hands together in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Okay, let's go.
reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, O my people, I will open your graves and have you rise from them and bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and have you rise from them, O my people. I will put my spirit in you that you may live and I will settle you upon your land. Thus you shall know that I am the Lord. I have promised and I will do it, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are in the flesh cannot please God, but you are not in the flesh. On the contrary, you are in the spirit, if only the spirit of God dwells in you. Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him, but if Christ is in you, Although the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is alive because of righteousness. If the spirit of the one who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, the one who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies also through his spirit dwelling in you. The word of the Lord. Girl. 
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory now a man was ill, Lazarus, from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who had anointed the Lord with perfumed oil and dried his feet with her hair. It was her brother Lazarus who was ill. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, saying, Master, the one you love is ill. When Jesus heard this, he said, This illness is not to end in death, but is for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when they heard that he was ill, he remained for two days in the place where he was. Then, after this, he said to his disciples, Let us go back to Judea. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the king of uh, the uh, Jews were just trying to stone you, and you want to go back there? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in a day? If one walks during the day, he does not stumble because he sees the light of this world. But if one walks at night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. He said this, and then he told them, Our friend Lazarus is asleep, but I am going to awaken him. So the disciples said to him, Master, if he's asleep, he will be safe. But Jesus was talking about his death. Well, they thought that he meant ordinary sleep. So then Jesus said to them clearly, Lazarus has died, and I am glad for you that I was not there, that you may believe. Let us go to him. So Thomas, called Didymus, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go to die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been already been in the tomb for four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, only about two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went to meet him, but Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know that whatever you ask of God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise. Martha said to him, I know he will rise in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus told her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even if he dies, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. <laughs> Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I've come to believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, the one who is coming into the world. When she had said this, she went and called her sister Mary secretly, saying, The teacher is here and is asking for you. As soon as she heard this, she rose quickly and went to him, for Jesus was not uh, yet come into the village, but was still where Martha had met him. So when the Jews who were with her in the house, comforting her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out, they followed her, presuming that she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her weeping, he became perturbed and deeply troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, sir, Come and see. And Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, 
Could not the one who opened the eyes of the blind man had done something so that this man would not have died? So Jesus, perturbed again, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay across it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the dead man's sister, said to him, Lord, by now there will be a stench. He's been dead for four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believe, you will see the glory of God? So they took away the stone, and Jesus raised his eyes and said, Father, I thank you for hearing me. I know that you always hear me, but because of the crowd here I have said this, that they may believe that you sent me. And when he had said this, he cried out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, tied hand and foot with burial bands, and his face was wrapped in a cloth. So Jesus said to them, Untie him and let him go. Now many of the Jews who had come to Mary had seen what he had done and began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Glory to you, O Lord of God, Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, how are you? Could as well be, how is your life? Master, the one you love is ill. That is what we hear Martha send a message. If it was a text, it is very clear. The one you love, the, the one you love is ill. I don't know. One of those messages that you must get it. If we can have some kind of recap of where we've come from to the extent of to where we are, remember we had the first Sunday of Lent, uh, the trans uh, sorry, the temptations of Jesus, the three temptations. Thereafter, the second Sunday of Lent, was the transfiguration. And remember after that, we had the woman at the what? At the well. And last Sunday, guess what? The man born blind. Now here we are, this fifth Sunday in Lent, and the rising, coming back to life of Lazarus. So we are almost there. John, as the gospel writer, has a lot of skill in how he puts these stories, which we've all heard about for a long time when we talk about transfiguration, we know what it means. We talk about the blind man, the woman at the well. We talk about Lazarus coming back to life. All these are stories for which we, in which we are very familiar. What we see in all these, that Jesus identifies himself. His true identity as God, and as a human person, as a human being. And that's what we hear, that Mary, Martha is sending a message to Jesus. The one you love is ill. Which means that this is a message, not from any other, but really con a concern for Jesus because this is a family where he was connected. He knew Mary, he knew Martha, he knew Lazarus. It is closer to his heart. Ma Martha is very much aware that at the moment when Jesus' ministry has come to a close, is now quietly disappearing out of the scene. Why? Because they are looking for his head. The chief priests, the scribes, the Pharisees are looking for him. They've been condemning him for doing weird things. How can he open the eyes of the blind? 
How can he cure people on the Sabbath? So the list is long, and he has to pay for it. So he's hiding. He's away from the sin. He's away from the, clou the crowds. He's away from the public. So Martha knows well that he has time. He must come. What Martha does not tell with the messengers how sick he was. How ill. By the way, I was thinking about what's the difference between being sick and ill? The same? I don't know. You help me out. Someone sick and someone ill. I think ill is way to a level of where it's too much. Sickness. That's where Lazarus was, and Jesus is not told by Martha that you must come now, hoping the message would be as clear as the day. And later, Jesus is sent. Before that, he says, this sickness, is this illness, is not to take his life. It's not going to lead to death. In the way, he's joking about it. Then later, they say, he has died. Lazarus has died. He says he's asleep. It doesn't make sense to those who are around him. They're like, really? I think Jesus was stressed. What do you think? I think so. Jesus must have been stressed a lot about what had happened to him. And he's like, come on, guys, you know what? I know, I know, I know. I've heard. I understand. I'm not deaf. He wants them to open their eyes and ears, their awareness that if he's God, he can do anything. He can, he can make life better. That's why he says he's asleep. They're like, is he crazy? Jesus knew what he was talking about. He knew who he was, and he wants the others to know who exactly he is. If there are those who have not believed in him way back, when he was trying to identify himself in the I am's, the I am's of uh, St. John in the Gospel, I am the bread of life, I am the true vine, I am the what? The good shepherd. I am, the other one is. That's your homework. Yeah, Jesus tries to identify himself in relation to the people and their life what it means for them. I am the branch, you are the branches. I, I'm, I'm, the, uh, you are the, I'm the vine, you are the branches. This time, he wants to be the last card of his revelation, which we would call the master card. It says later, I am the resurrection and the life. We know Martha. Martha was anxious. Martha had too much on her head. Martha is worried. Martha tries to make sure that she thinks she can fix the problems of this world. She was wrong. Mary stayed at home. As if she wasn't bothered, she knew that, okay, Lazarus is not well, but what can I do? We can only do so much. In our world today, there's where we must understand and get it right that we can only do so much to solve the world's problems, above all people's problems. There's only so much we can do. But Martha thinks she can fix it. To the extent that she's even pushing Jesus to make sure she can, Jesus can join her in making a difference. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus was there if they understood him. But they think he wasn't there if they didn't really understand him. Of course, remember, Jesus was human and God. What part of Jesus do they know more? What part of Jesus shows up? Four days later, when Lazarus is in the tomb. It is said that for the Jews, for someone to have been four days in the tomb, it means DNR, do not resuscitate. This person is gone. Jesus 
is aware and he comes finally. He wasn't late. He was on time. Because it, this moment was a moment of the true revelation of who he is for everyone. He allowed time enough for everyone to know about the news of the death of Lazarus. Like it often happens, someone dies and news goes around. A few days later, so many people have known about the death of this person. And people gather and they begin, the novenas, they begin to pray for them. People plan out their tickets to fly in if they are out of state. Others drive in. On the D-Day, it's like everyone who ought to be there and has made plans is there. By the way, we had three funerals this week. That's a lot of death. Smelling death. If you happen to see some of those flowers, it's not because there was the wedding party. Reminding us about death around in, in our house. We normally send out information, we lost someone, which is not a mandate and obligation, but we think it would be good enough that people show up for this family. You don't have to know them. But showing up, actually not even showing up, but being present is a, a good act of concern and compassion to this family. How many times have we seen people at funerals and like we don't even know who they are? But simply because they have a good heart. They didn't know this person in life, but at least they've known about the tragedy in this family and they are present to support this family in this most difficult moment. That's the true humanity that Jesus brings and all the others that we don't even see anyone trying to arrest Jesus for the wrong that he had done. They forget about it. At the moment, is the moment where they can focus on this sad moment. All we hear is that, oh, isn't this the man who opened the eyes of the blind so they can identify him? Couldn't he have done something? Uh-huh. At least they remember. They can pick him from the crowd and say, oh, let's wait and see. I think he's going to do something. They knew that Jesus is the one. He's done some great things before, and they want to see what he can do about this. At the moment, Jesus is grieved. Jesus wept. Oh, he did. Does Jesus weep as God or as man? Jesus weeps, not just being sympathetic, but empathetic with this family that he loved. When Martha says, the one you love is ill, Martha goes to Mary and says, Mary, the Lord is here. So he knew this family. He loved them, and they loved him. So they all come together, and Jesus, no way that he could miss out into being in the moment, he wept. He wept not because he was God, but he was with them to identify his humanity with all these that were going through this most difficult moment. And after his prayer to his father, Reminding all those around that he's not only in himself, but with this God who is always present and has never let him down. Where do we run to in those moments when we really need the help we need? Sometimes we may need right away, it may not come. But who are those that we can run to and they will bail us out? Who are those who will take us an extra mile when we can't seem to go anywhere. Who are those we love? The one you love is in. That whatever affects them affects us because we love them, because we are together. I love when Thomas says, you know, Jesus, when they say 
when I thought and was reflecting that he was kind of stressed out, they're like, Jesus, these guys are looking for you, and you're going right there. Are you crazy? He's like, no, 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 I must go. He says, okay. Thomas says, we shall go to die with you. They knew that was it. I love when the courage, when Thomas did and says, you know what, let's go and die with him. If he meant it, or if it was out of being firm and being like, okay, we don't want to leave him alone. How will he think when you have abandoned him? If the others have abandoned him, we're not going to abandon him. Let's go. Okay. They're like, we hope he does something. Otherwise, I don't think we are ready to die. You know, I imagine the conversations along the way. This was a distance away. By the time they get there, I think something has changed. If they were scared, they look at him and they get stronger because he's strong. They allow him to be ahead and they're just like behind him. I imagine when it's like, all right, take positions. You know when we have the, the color, what do they call them, the taps? Those guys come out, they're so neat. They're very attentive. Take positions. Jesus at this moment is in charge. The time of mourning is over. He knows what he can do. After that prayer, he says, okay, remove the stone. He would have said with his power, the stone, move, be moved. But he says, remove the stone because they're the ones who put it. If you put it, now remove it. Do your part. Do yours and I will do mine. You know? That's what Jesus does. He gives us a chance to do and play our part. And now he calls out Lazarus. He calls him by name. He's not calling out the dead Lazarus. He's calling out the living Lazarus. He's calling him from out of darkness into... Say light, please. Okay. He's calling him out of darkness into... From death to, from agony to, joy. Come on. Oh, anyway, you could choose another word. Mine happens to be that, you know. So there has to be a way that Jesus brings a difference in this moment. And they see it. The morning is over. Untie him. I imagine at that moment, if Jesus knew and Lazarus in there knew, he comes out and says, surprise. You thought I was dead? Sorry. You tied me up? Sorry. Like, guys, what did I miss? He's looking at, oh, you came. You too came. Oh, thank you. All right, I know you love me. Oh, sorry. I, I played that, but I'm glad you're here. I mean, he's trying to look around to see how much Jesus has brought a beautiful moment. There are people, when they show up, the whole room lightens up. The whole room, they come with joy, they come with vigor, they come with good vibe, they say, you know. That's a gift. Look out for those people who add value to your life. Respect them. Love them. Till the, 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 the what do you call it, uh, at the Atlantic will dry. It will never, of course. But I mean, that's the extent that those who will be there for us must be there for us and we really are aware they are there for us. That's what Jesus, he brings God's love into this moment and it changes forever. By the way, we are never told, what happened to Lazarus after that? Don't ask me, ask the Bible scholars, you know. What happened? Did he die again? I imagine Lazarus like, yes, I've come to join the party again. Let me catch up to where I left off. I missed four days. Four days. How many hours? Okay, I failed to count. But I mean, you know, missing out, missing out in life. If you haven't been and spent a night in the hospital in the last three months, be grateful. It's true. That one day can be too long in the hospital. But we haven't been there. You have life. As we celebrate life, 
It's not because it is without challenges, get, don't get me wrong, but simply because we are the reason that we make life. What is life? Someone said, life is life. Another said, life is what you make it. Another said, life is good. Why? Because we make it good. As crazy as this world can be, we are part of how it has turned out to be. If we choose to have it a better place, we can make it. We have everything in our hands. We have all it takes, all it takes is to work together and team up together and have life at the center of everything. Let us pray that as we look forward to the new life that Jesus is coming, bringing us to, Ezekiel has promised, I'll raise you from the graves, get you back into life. Let's get out of those graves. We know which ones they are. Let's look out to the new life that's being unveiled. And very soon when it's unveiled, we must not remain in the tomb and never go back. Because life is what it takes. That even when death comes, the promise of the Lord is that those who believe in him, we shall not die. Those who believe in him will live eternally. Because he says, I am life and the resurrection and the what? We human beings, we can say, I have life. But Jesus is the only one who says, I am life. We have life, but he is life. Amen. Uh, we call upon our elect who are on this journey to please come forward and with their sponsors. Guys, we're almost there. We're almost there. In this season of prayer, God invites us to join our elect, to scrutinize ourselves, to look into our souls, to see what is weak and harmful, and to see what is good and strong. Elect of God, bow your heads and pray. Let us now offer our prayers for the elect of the church, who, for the elect who the church has confidently chosen. May the grace of the sacraments that we receive conform them in Christ, in his passion and resurrection. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer, that these elect will be given the faith to acknowledge Christ as the resurrection and the life. We pray for our elect. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may be freed from sin and grow in the holiness that leads to eternal life. We pray for their elect. Lord, hear our prayer. That liberated by repentance from the shackles of sin, they may become like Christ by baptism, dead to sin, and alive forever in God's sight. We pray for our elect. Lord, hear our prayer. That they may be filled with the hope of the life-giving spirit and prepare, prepare themselves thoroughly for their birth to new life when they will be baptized and confirmed. We pray for our elect. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Eucharistic food which we, they will soon receive may make from them one with Christ, the source of life and of the resurrection. We pray for our elect. That all of us may walk in the newness of life and show to the world the power of the risen Christ. We pray for our elect. That all the world may find Christ and acknowledge in him the promises of eternal life and live in peace. peace. We pray to the Lord. And for the intentions of this Mass, we pray for the departed uh, Cynthia, that the Lord may grant her eternal rest. We pray to the Lord. And for those we pray especially on this anniversary of their death, 
Oh, so that the Lord may grant them eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of life and God, known of the dead but of the living, you sent your Son to proclaim life, to snatch us from the realm of death, and to lead us to the resurrection. Free these elect from death, dealing power of the spirit of evil, so that they may bear witness to their new life in the risen Christ, for he lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you commanded Lazarus to step forth alive from the tomb and by your own resurrection freed all people from death. We pray for these servants who eagerly approach the waters of new birth and hunger for the banquet of life do not let the power of death hold them back, for by their faith they will share in the triumph of the resurrection, for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Go forth to further reflect on the word of God. Thanks be to God. Shall we now rise and profess our faith? I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man, for our sake who was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and stood at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead. Please be seated.
Pray, brethren, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the mighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty in our salvation, always in the bread, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for as the true man he wept for Lazarus, his friend, and has eternal God raised him from the tomb, just as taking pity on the human race, he leads us by sacred mysteries to new life. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. Indeed, holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, make holy therefore this gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of a new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring heart to the fullness of charity together with Francine, our Pope, and Barry, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially Cynthia and those that we pray for during this Mass. And all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distresses. We await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said it to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your church, and graciously grant heart, peace, and unity in accordance with your will, we live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called the Supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy.
Let us pray. May your people be as one, O oh Lord, we pray, and in wholehearted submission to you, may they obtain this grace that safe from all distress they may readily live out their joy at being saved and remember in loving prayer those to be reborn through christ our lord Amen. i'd like to thank our altar servers thank you always and our wonderful liturgical musicians our lectors the ashes eucharistic ministers mass coordinator our ashes in this very special way and those who help out in every way our staff behind the scenes uh, we have a new secretary, Sherry, by the name of Sherry. We welcome her to our team. If you happen to pass by the office, say hello. And um, also would like to thank all those that are helping out in many ways as volunteers of our parish. We've been talking about the annual diocesan appeal, ADA. By now, I believe you've been here long enough, you know what I'm talking about. Annual diocesan appeal, meaning it is every year. We all come together as members of this diocese that is actively. Today we talk about faith in action. It's not enough to say all the Hail Marys. It's not enough to say all the Our Fathers. But putting our faith in action is in deeds that are visible. And this is one of them. We contribute towards the needs of the diocese as a whole and part of the money that comes back also to help us in our parishes. That is. If we make 100%, we get 20% back to our parish. If we make way over the goal, then we get 30%. So our goal is $55,780. And where are we so far? 
38%. If you haven't done so, now it is made easy, no excuse. Oh, Father, I didn't receive my envelope. I'm new, no excuse. You get it? We have a QR code. You know by now what a QR code is. My eyes cannot read it, but your smartphone can read it. So get your smartphone, take and scan this QR code. It will lead you to the page and think about what you need to donate. When I asked if someone had 30,000, I would tell you that now we are there. But I didn't get any so far. So each one of you, so as I stand there, get your phones ready. Of course, I can't do that. I know it from your heart. Do it from your heart. You know what I'm talking about in order to support the needs of our diocese. And uh, for our children, we shall have the Easter egg hunt, which will be on Saturday, April the 1st, from 10 to noon, ages uh, 0 to 12. There will be a wonderful breakfast. So parents, bring those children. And for good plans and planning ahead, uh, register on the sheet of paper, on the welcome table, to make sure the parish life can have a good way of how to plan this occasion. And on Monday after Palm Sunday, which is uh, April the 3rd, we have the Chrism Mass. The Chrism Mass is normally in Richmond. We all come together. We have an opportunity to have a bus from here. It's very comfortable. We move to travel together, leaving at 2 o'clock, and then it brings us back in the evening. So register, there's another sheet of paper right there to make sure that you don't, out, you don't miss out that opportunity. And also pray for our confirmandis, our children who are going to be confirmed tonight. We pray for them that it doesn't end today, but it continues all the way in their lives. And also would like to remind you that on Easter Vigil, that's when we welcome the new members in the church. If you want to be part of it in a special way, bring a, some kind of food. Parish Life is asking us to have our names registered in order for us to be part of this wonderful celebration. And remember, each one of us is always more than welcome. Is that right? You still hear me? Yes. <laughs> and you know what? We have young parents in our parish. Young parents, where are you? Raise your hands. If you have kids below 10 years, raise your hands. Yes, I'm talking about you. These are young parents in our parish that we need to support. There is an opportunity for these young parents to get together, and that will be April, the Friday, some last Friday of April. Please reach out to the office for more details, and we shall get together. We have daycare and uh, taking care of the kids. Parents can hang out and forget about the kids for a minute. Don't miss out this opportunity. We are ending the month of March. If your birthday was in this month and you'd like to come for a blessing, please come forward. If your birthday was in the month of March, that is if you remember. Yes, we celebrate life, like I said, if you are not, if you are still alive and still breathing, are you? It means you have life. God our Father, we thank you for these members who had their birthdays in this month. We thank you for the gift of their life and being part of this wonderful community. We ask you to bless them even the more in this new year that you've given them with more blessings in this parish and their families and friends. We made this prayer through Christ our Lord. When was that? When, when was it? When was the March 18th. March 18th. Good for you. The 21st. Yours? March 18th. 18th. Oh, your twins. <laughs> Today. Today. Wow. Hello. Yours? The 20th. Yours? Yes. The 6th. And when was yours? The 6th. Six. The 6th. Oh, your twins. Mm -hmm. 29th. 29th. Coming up. The 15th, yours? 21st. The 21st, yours? The 10th. The 10th. Is this your daughter? When was yours? 17th. The 17th. One. The 1st. 21. 21, eh, plus 1. <laughs> and yours? 21. 21, oh, your twins. 22nd. 22nd. March 2nd. Oh, March 2nd. Good for you. <laughs> the 11th. 
<laughs> Today, wow. Okay. Yours? The 20th. Eight. The eighth, like Dick and Mike. Yours? Like the 30th. The what? The 30th. The 30th coming out. The 20th. The 20th. 24th. The 24th. The 5th. The 5th. Happy birthday to you. Have a blessed week and stay healthy. Hope to see you again. The Lord be with you. And, with your and may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord one another. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.